Hello, this is BuilderDude35 here, and today I'm going to have some tips for choosing the best wheels for your FLL robot. So what wheels should you use on your FLL robot? My recommendation is to do what I have here and use the tallest wheels you can possibly find with the slickest, smoothest tread possible. The best wheels to use would be Lego motorcycle wheels because they're tall and thin which makes them save a lot of space and they have this slick tread pattern because a knobby tread pattern is going to produce a lot of vibration. Your robot's going to vibrate a little bit and thus it's going to be less accurate when you're making your FLL programs. And I'm going to be going over the pros and cons of using these types of wheels right now. So first, for the pros or advantages of using tall wheels, the first advantage of using these tall wheels is that it helps you make a very compact robot, like you'll see I have here. Uh, the tall wheels allow you to put your drive motors, the EV3 large motors, upside down like I have in my robot here, and this saves a lot of space because it drastically shortens your robot. The second advantage of using taller wheels is that they're going to make your robot much faster. And why do you want to go faster, you ask? Because your FLL match is only two and a half minutes long, and if your robot is moving faster, then you're spending less time getting to and from the missions, and that's more time you can spend doing other missions and scoring more points. And now, so some of you, especially if you don't have a mechanical engineering background, may be wondering, how does it make your robot faster? Well, if you take a smaller wheel next to a larger wheel, you'll notice that the larger wheel has a lot more of a circumference. Everybody knows that. And the circumference, assuming that your motor is spinning at, at the same rate, the circumference is the amount of distance that your robot is going to travel with one motor rotation. So if the motor rotation takes the same amount of time for each of the wheels, then the taller wheels are going to travel a greater distance in the same amount of time than a smaller wheel. And speed, divided by, uh, speed is distance divided by time, so now your robot is going faster. So with that last pro, it brings me to the first con. I live life by the motto that you don't get something from nothing, because it applies a lot to mechanical engineering. And even though you're putting taller wheels on the robot and it's making it faster, it's not just magically making it faster without sacrificing anything. What is sacrificed is the torque of the motors. And torque is the actual driving force or strength that the motors can apply. Now, this isn't really too big of a problem because EV3 motors and NXT motors have plenty of torque. But just keep in mind for future reference, if you put a heavy load on your robot, or if for whatever reason you're using way too huge wheels, or you have a very steep gear ratio, eventually you'll get to the point where your robot doesn't have enough torque, and you won't be able to go faster infinitely. The second con is that when you use taller wheels on the EV3, it multiplies the backlash or play in the EV3 motors from what it would normally be with smaller wheels. What I mean by that is, you see, when I'm rolling the robot, there's a lot more dead space between when I'm actually rolling the robot and when the EV3 motor inside actually engages. And this could be harmful on the field, but lucky for you, there's a lot of ways that you can counter this. The first way is to use an EV3 gyro sensor to uh, do your turns, which eliminates the degree counter out of the whole entire turning operation. Now, I don't have a tutorial on the gyro sensor yet, but I maybe will eventually. So when that's up, I'll put an annotation here. The next uh, thing you can do to counter this is before you launch your program, just manually roll your robot by hand in the base. And what this does is it evens out the backlash in each of the motors, so it's more accurate. Or you can diminish this problem using sensor alignment. If you click on this annotation, it will bring you to another one of my videos that will teach you how to make sensor alignment for your robot. The third and final con of using taller wheels is that sometimes driving around with taller wheels at 100% power makes your robot a little too inaccurate to be practical for FLL. What I mean is sometimes your robot will do burnouts when it starts driving and then when you stop you tip forward a few degrees and this could uh, kill the accuracy on your robot. 
So what I recommend doing is when you're driving around under normal circumstances, just use 75% power almost all the time. And I guarantee you that these tall wheels at 75% power are way faster than the smaller wheels at 100% power could ever be. And you still don't have to worry about being inaccurate because your robot won't be doing burnouts. I recommend only using 100% power for when you're returning to base because that doesn't need to be as accurate as getting to the mission. So even though there are a few cons to using tall wheels on your FLL robot, you can pretty much use a me methods to counter all of these cons, which leaves you with only the pros, the advantages, and that's why I would personally recommend using taller wheels for your FLL robot. So the last thing I have to say is I remember I used to say a lot that these taller wheels generate more grip than smaller wheels, and that's really, I don't know if that's true anymore. I did some research, and it seemed the more I researched, the more confused I actually became. So I'm not really sure what type of relationship there is between increasing wheel diameter and what kind of grip effect that would have on the grip of the wheel. Like I said, the more I researched, the more confused I became. Well, Albert Einstein once famously said himself, as the circle of our knowledge increases, so does the circumference of the darkness around us. And while we're on the topic of circles, I want to wish you a happy Pi Day 2015 and a happy birthday to Albert Einstein. Thank you for watching, guys. Bye.